So he helped us to know it is the presence of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. And again, the next level is we already have it. We already are connected to that flow. So what we desire to learn is what do we do when that anointing is operating in our lives? Because you have it now. I think Sister Moticia was using the word. You activate that enabling power in a person you know and you are able to relate to so that you can, you can be able to tap from what he has for us. But the question I want us to ask ourselves is, when the anointing comes, what do we do? When the anointing comes, now we are not anticipating the anointing coming. We have it. What do you expect? Of course, when you have something, there is always some signs that you have it. And I want to look at a scripture in Judge is First Samuel. First Samuel. First Samuel chapter ten. Because first John two twenty seven we discovered the anointing you have received. And I pray that you remind yourself that the anointing which I have already received and it is in me. Mm? And it is in full measure. And it has work to do in me. It teaches me all things. And I don't need anybody else to teach me. Other than to remind me what he has taught me. And to go deeper into what he has taught me. And then, um, uh, and he is true, dependable, reliable. And he cannot lie. Therefore, that anointing abides in you. And you need to look for ways to apply it in its fullness, in its full measure. The seven dimension of the Holy Spirit in us. When you understand that, you begin to seek to operate at that level. And for example, if the Holy Spirit was operating in the, in the Old Testament in a big way, how much more when he comes upon somebody like Samson and he does wonders. How about us who is not just, he's not just coming upon us, but he come, he is in us and dwelling in us. In Joel chapter 2, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to somewhere, don't worry. Joel chapter 2 verse 23 says, Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain the moderately, moderately. He has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Notice that. He has given us the former rain moderately, as we needed what was sufficient, but he has a desire now as we demonstrate our thirst and our hunger. There is that possibility that you can connect with the same. The rain, and we said the rain is what increases, is what enforces, is what manifests the, the measure of the Holy Spirit working in you. So the more rain you have, the better for you. And he says, he can give us in one month, meaning in a short period of time, condensed why? Because the climate, the atmosphere, the environment, the timing is right. So you can gather more now than you could have done maybe in the past without struggle and without any hindrance. That's what it means that when he comes, you can connect easily now because it is a season. And for, for of course, that's why we are talking about the anointing and it is the appropriate time. So I want to share briefly the things that can help you to know that you have the anointing and it's working for you. And number one, we said it is identity. Anointing gives you identity. And we saw that in the life of Jesus in Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, 
and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon you and is working in your life, he will come upon you and help you to be able to manifest that presence. And he manifests like Jesus did for us because that is how he came to him. And the power was irresistible. The power was visible. The power was real. And it is the same even for us. In the book of Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. Before the day of Pentecost, Jesus told his disciples, wait until you are endued with the power so that you may become witnesses for me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the world. So when the anointing comes, the first phase is receiving power. John chapter 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. As many as received him, they were given what? The right, the power, the authority to be called the sons of God. And that power is now guaranteeing you that you can go to the next level. And the next level was, that was power or authority to be called. It's an identity that you're now a son of God. And because you're a son of God, Jesus says, don't leave Jerusalem until now you're given the identity. That thing is going to distinguish you from everybody else in Jerusalem uh, and, uh, and the other part of the world you're going. So in Samuel, now I come to Samuel chapter 1. Verse, no, chapter 10, I said verse 1. So one of the signs of the anointing in your life, it will give you an identity. Where you are not recognized, where you are not known, where you are just uh, an ordinary figure, like Jesus in Nazareth. All of a sudden, God gives you significance, value, right? You become somebody of importance. How? It is what you carry. Not you changing in any way, but you are anointed to manifest that change, that identity that people can identify with that man. For Jesus was saying, what wisdom is this? Is this not Joseph's son? But now he is presenting himself in a different way. Is this the one you were seeing doing carpentry work? But now it's like the mighty works that he was doing by his wisdom what has happened to son of Joseph? There was something that happened, and we saw that in Matthew 3, 15 and 16. When he was baptized by John in the Jordan, the Spirit of the Lord descended upon him. And he changed that. At that point, he ceased to be Jesus of Nazareth, and he became Jesus, the Christ of God. Jesus, the anointed one. So you also need to change from your ordinary name and you become, you may not, you don't have to change the name, but you become your name, but anointed name. And if you're there and you want to have an identity, can you receive it now in Jesus' name? Amen. You see, if you fail to connect with the flow of the Holy Spirit, I realize, these days I'm realizing, God doesn't shout. <laughs> Isn't it? He doesn't. I don't know why we are prompted to shout. Because there is a lot of noise around us. Your noise is not going to shout. Even if you can hear someone who is going to say, Hey! The noise is going to pollute the atmosphere. But ordinarily, to me wonder to receive in quietness, you know, in stillness. Hmm? God, God doesn't come. Of course, when he comes with thunder and lightning, it's a warning. It's a sign. But when he speaks to you, it's like you can't see him in the lightning. You can't see him in the soundness. Even, even the day of Pentecost, is a, they had a sound from heaven, like a mighty rushing wind. But after that, it was not the mighty rushing wind that changed them. It is the tongues that they received. That was where oil, like a fire. You see, so it is what is the tongues that were important to give evidence, not the right, not the sound. The sound was to alert you. Some, something is going to happen. So when you are alert, then you will see the tongues of fire. 
But when you're not alert, the tongues of fire will come, but you'll be looking for another sound again. That's the way we are programmed. So you need to know how does God move? His nature, he says, be still and know I am God. You see, you see it? Just be still and know that I am God because when I come to you, I will not announce very much. It's just a signal I am coming. Then, we are a congreshe. So, the, the, the sign that God gives you or the signs that that's manifest because you have anointing, we find that in that scripture I'm talking about Samuel, First Samuel chapter 10, and this is when Samuel anointed Saul. Hmm? Then Samuel took uh, a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain or to be commander over his inheritance. When he poured the oil, which was a symbolic or representation of the Holy Spirit, Saul, an ordinary Saul, son of Kish, changed. He was not even aware of what Samuel was doing. He anointed him, and by that anointing, Samuel was telling him, something has happened to you. There is a sign that you have received something by me pouring oil on you. That is what you are calling anointing. Was it the oil? No. What was the oil for? Just a, same, a sign or a symbol or an indicator. Something is going to happen inside you. What is that? He was changed from an ordinary person and he became the commander of God's inheritance. You get it? it is, you can't see it. But it is evident that soul changed. Amen. So you have also changed if you receive that anointing, but you have not manifested that command. So one of the signs, one of the uh, evidence that you have the anointing is the command that you have. Hallelujah. Are you getting the, the, the point? You become, you are in charge now. It's like you are in control. Where you are frustrated, where you are stagnating, where you are fearful, and where you are worried, it's like you become alive, alive and in command. You are a captain of God's inheritance. You begin to see yourself now, I'm not just an ordinary person here, but I have been given a mission, and I've been given an honor, and I've been given an authority to be what I have been anointed for. Hallelujah. So that sign is the command that you have over the circumstances around you. Whatever things the enemy was doing against you and harassing you, tormenting you and pulling you down and calling you name, you begin, you feel you are in charge now. Amen. Somebody is receiving that grace as I speak right now. And I'm not going back there if you didn't receive. Kwaheli. <laughs> <laughs> you become you, that, you see the anointing was primarily to restore you back to the original state God created us you remember in the garden of Eden what we lost is command, is dominion is authority so you are given back your rightful or, uh, inheritance of half dominion over your circumstances how will that happen I have no idea but as it happened, it is the evidence. <laughs> and you, 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 you find yourself now having that command of a situation, command over your lifestyle, command over your mission, and you're doing things beyond what you could do by yourself. What is it? Something has happened. Amen. Can you just talk to yourself and say, something happened? When you receive that anointing we are talking about, something changed in the spiritual dimension. There are forces that discovered, ah, this guy, you better be careful. Amen. Kwa sababu, ukiona mfalume, ukiona president akipitia mahari, do you just handle him anyhow? Supposing he just decide to visit us today. Do we usher him to sit at the corner there? <laughs> He doesn't even to, doesn't need to say, hey, mimi ni ruto na niko hapa. <laughs> Does he need to do that? 
No, he just need to, to appear there even when you don't have ushers in the church, you will have ushers in the church that day. I don't know where they come from. <laughs> but the thing is, you carry an aura, an atmosphere. You carry authority. You carry something that people can as, uh, uh, identify. Ah, this is not an ordinary guy. I'm talking about you who is listening to me. Hallelujah. So that is one of the signs that it's going to happen to you. And when it comes, you must accept it that you have it. And you are able to know you are now from henceforth a man or a woman who has authority. The beautiful thing is a man or a woman who has authority is a man who is under authority. You cannot exercise authority unless you are submitted to authority. Amen. That is why if you know that you have that anointing, just allow God to help you to, to be able to align yourself to what need to come your way and the way you conduct yourself. You don't have to, when you have anointing again, you don't have to advertise until you're anointed. Uh-uh, you don't have to. So it is visible, recognizable, and irresistible. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon Samson, even when he is wicked, he begins to break chain. <laughs> Does he need to say, I am Samson? Uh uh, everybody can see. Samson is allowed. So it even you, what you carry in a Hitaji to a circumstance. Na sana sana ni shida. Ama ni attack of the enemy who just provoke you. Aona ni nini unabeba. Ama bado unafahamu unabeba hiyo unabeba. Amen. So Saul happened to, to have changed that way. In, in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 2, it says, when, you, uh, when thou art departed from me today, then you shall find two men by a place called Rachel's Porcher in the border of Benjamin and Selza. And they will say unto you, the asses which thou went looking, seeking, are found, and lo, thy father has left to care of the asses, but sorrows for you, saying, what shall I do for my son? Saul, after receiving anointing, you remember when he went to Samuel, he was looking for the lost donkeys, right? Now, this is the most very significant thing, and remember I'm talking about evidence, signs that you have anointing. The lost donkeys, they were looking for them everywhere and they couldn't find them. So they, they went to Prophet Samuel to prophesy. Mahali sita patikana. Atu awasaidie. Kwa sababu ni kama tume zunguka kira mahali na hisi ni puda maninini. Hati patikani. So we are going to the seer, to the man of God, to tell us where the donkeys are. But when the anointing comes from Samuel, it is shift because the anointing he received from Samuel empowers him to be like Samuel. Umepata? Amepata? He has a, I think, kama ata mimi kama ni Samuel. Siwezi kwa anointi mutu na mimi sija na wintiwa. Sindio, you give what you have. So, ana, he has that capacity kwa sababu of the anointing operating in his life. Even the people in the village knew that Samuel was somebody different. He could do things they could not do. Right? So now Saul has the same thing that Samuel carries. And one of the things that happens to you when you have anointing is recovery. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I, I saw that and I realized, ah, this is why God is taking us this path. You recover what you have lost because of anointing. Hallelujah. And I'm not just talking about literal petty things. About, no, the things that you have lost and it's like they are beyond your means to recover them. The anointing to recover comes because you are anointed and you align yourself with the season of what you need to do for the kingdom and for God as per that moment. Amen. Uh, in verse 3, we say, Then 
shall you go on forward from there. He was told now, don't worry about the donkeys. Someone told him, don't worry about the donkeys. They have been found. And Saul is like he knew. But his father was concerned. So, hakuwa me connect na hiyo anointing. Lakini kwa sababu Samuel anajua na anafahamu vile mungu anafanya kazi. Na hiyo anointing abaye, sasa Saul amebeba, eye pia meaza kuelewa the Yo, yo language, your spiritual language. So you need to understand the spiritual language, how you recover what you have lost. What is that? It is knowing to listen carefully from what instruction he gives you. Because I will you And you'll be able to react in a different way because you have recovered insight. You have recovered insight. You have recovered grace. You have recovered ability to know how to maneuver your issue and get what needed for you. So in verse 3, now he get another. So the, the, the evidence is you will be able to recover what you lost. Some of you are going to recover your joy. Can you receive it in Jesus' name? Some of you are going to, re- to recover strength that has been, been, been taken away by the enemy because of many pressures. So when you begin to, to see things coming back to you, then you realize, ah, anointing is working. Things that you could not, you, you're longing for them, and you know you need them. You know you lost them. But you're trying to look for them is like, hasi patikani. Kwani zirienda wapi? So it is the anointing that is required. So when you find yourself stranded, don't... <laughs> Let me do Marisa too. Don't go to look for somebody to pray for you. Just check what is not working in you. Because if you activate that anointing in you, it begins to direct you what to do and how to do it, and it works for you. That's why we are saying anointing is everything. And remember we said anointing CO2 ya kuhubiri. Wahubiri wanahitaji anointing very badly. Where is Kuhubiri Ata be anointing in the first place? The ministry requires anointing at most. But every other task, every other thing that you do in life, the intensity, the greatness, the impact, the breakthroughs that you get, they are determined by the what kind of anointing you carry. Whether you know it or not, that is what measures what you carry. So when you see yourself struggling, when you see yourself not succeeding, and especially in that area of your calling or your uh, area of passion, then it means there's something that's not working in you properly. So if you align yourself and begin to build up that capacity, then you realize, ah, why was I struggling in this matter? So don't worry. It is just... Checking again what is it that need to be activated in my life so that I can get it. So you begin to see those things happening from today in Jesus' name. Then the next thing Paul uh, Saul got was, then he was told in verse 3, then shall you go on forward from where you are stuck. He was suspended. Kwasabu, akwa mepata. Punda zake, hakujua aende wapi, hakujua aludi nyubani kusema ziko wapi, na babake na gojea punda zirudi. <laughs> so he was like stranded there. So when you are stranded, when you are stagnating, it simply means you don't have the answer or the solution for what you are facing. It's an inquiry. But now, when the anointing comes, you no longer stagnate. Hallelujah. I declare to somebody here who is in the hearing of my voice in a very soft way, no more stagnation in the name of Jesus. Whether it is the spiritual dimension, amani, physical dimension, hijarisi, anointing inafanya kazi in all dimension. Kama ni mabo ya kimwiri, mabo ya kiroho, yote unahitaji anointing. Amen. And when God knows or sees that now you are aware that this is what to work. Kama niko shambani, niko kazini, niko shule, ama niko kwa kanisa. By the way, a believer 
hatakui kuwa a believer in the church anakaa kivipi hapo na vile ako kazini you are supposed to be the you the way you are seated there is the way you are supposed to be sitting at home did you hear what i just say you, you are not the, you are the same person so sio an environment hapa inakufanya uwe mtulivu <laughs> kama unaweza kuwa mtulivu hapa hata nyumbani unaweza unaweza hata huko kwa marketplace where watu ni hostile na shouting and all those commotion you still can be calm kwa sababu ni yule yule tu alikuwa church hmm? ukienda nyumbani hujabadilika si ndio ile kitu imebadilika ni hiyo environment mahali huko na kwa sababu anointing ile umepewa ni wewe ubadilishe hiyo hali ya anga iko around you na sio wewe ubadilishwe na hali ya anga can somebody say amen i refuse to be a victim of environment any longer in jesus name amen. that's it it is the anointing that enables you to say no to the wrong environment to the wrong company and to the wrong things that do not belongs to you so this this is this is what happened to so and so it when anointing come it propels in your life progress there is progress there is moving forward you are not stuck you are not just where you are hallelujah because when that anointing come that we said what happened is the stagnation the frustration the things are not working what is it when the when anointing is not lacking when okay when anointing is lacking it's not there that's why you find yourself uko vulnerable uko stuck you can't do things that you know you can do we are frustrated in whatever you are doing but why is it we saw that in isaiah 10 verse 27 what is lacking and you can see there is and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder okay and his yoke from off your neck when you are stuck when you have lost everything when you are when you are stranded when you are limited in whatever you are doing what is happening it is determined by the yoke that is operating in your life and you need to see that hmm? because it says and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away many of us are not able to we are not mobile because of the mizigo mingi tunabebana naye those are burdens that the devil gives you free of charge ulikuwa nataka kusema amen ukanyamaza ni sawa tu the yoke i want you to see when the anointing is there the yoke is broken when you receive it when you understand uko nae hiyo burden hiyo msigo hiyo hiyo kitu inakulemea wewe kimaisha in whatever way it is broken and this is this this he says and his yoke Look at that his yoke whose yoke ina kugadamiza is it god's yoke no it's the devil's yoke it is the devil's yoke that makes you to be oppressed in acts chapter 10 verse 38 it says now how have you heard how god anointed jesus of nazareth and he went doing good everywhere healing those who were oppressed by the devil did you hear Every sickness is an oppression from the devil don't say it is cold hakuna homa homa ni oppression ya that that is why you need to know it is and his yoke over my life what is this yoke that yoke ambaye inakuzuia kufauru kimaisha hiyo yoke ambaye inakuzuia ku enjoy your fellowship na Mungu unaona it's a yoke it's a heaviness In a, in a, it cut you off from God's presence it cut you off from your help kwa sababu your help now is no longer there wewe unabeba mzigo mzito 
and you have forgotten kuna kuna msaidizi ambaye anaweza kukusaidia na ndiye roho mtakatifu so that yoke must be broken and somebody's yoke is going down this morning in the name of Jesus because you discover you have anointing and when you have anointing you allow the anointing to work that's a issue thing not just receiving it not just knowing you have but you allow that anointing to do its work what is it work primarily anointing inakuja kuvunja hiyo inaitwa kwa Kiswahili nira eh hiyo nira so who who the banana nae tena but remember imetokana na shetani so anaangalia kama unajua anacheki kama unajua kutumia hiyo anointing akiona bado wewe ni mudhaifu kiasi ana, anaendelea ku, kukandamiza lakini imesha vunjwa haleluya it's not there it is your mind now saying ah hii muziko yangu ndani atanisaidia ulisaidiwa kitabo haleluya umeona watu ambao wanapewa ngwa lift na lori wakina mama kwa kivili sio town of course wanabebana na mzigo anaenda market anapewa lift na lori unaingia kwa lori unachukulia juu na msiko iko hiyo dio hiyo hiyo dio waamini wa, 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 wa wengi wanakaa hivyo mzigo ilitolewa kitambo kwa sababu aliambiwa come si ndio uweke mzigo ni kubebe lakini anaona kama gari itaenda na mzigo yake unasikiria hapo na uko na muziki sasa hata hata lift ilikuwa ina gani <laughs> but, but you see i want you to see very practically there that's what jesus said in matthew chapter 29 this is 29 11 29 says come to me come on come to me all ye that labor the foolish labor we were talking about on sunday come to me all ye that labor and are heavy laden that is why many believers don't go straight nikupebana na mizigo eh come to me all ye that are heavy laden hiyo mizigo inatoka wapi sio kwa Yesu anga kuita si ndio anataka kukusaidia akuondolee hiyo mzigo and that's what you are calling the yoke of the devil because the enemy's work ni kukuvinyiria tu kuhakikisha una raha una peace hmm? mateso hmm? hiyo yote Yesu anasema come to me all ye that are struggling all ye that are pain all ye that are carrying ashes all those are heavy that have the spirit of heaviness joni kwangu and i'll give you what rest that's why a believer a true believer anointed one of the clearest evidence is your rest you are at peace hata kwa hata wakati uko broke uko pi uko at peace kuna watu wanatoanga smile tu kama mwisho ya mwezi hapo ikipita hapo ni kama ina disappear <laughs> ah uh-uh. when you come to Christ you are at peace he give you rest that is not ordinary rest right what is a yoke by the way many of us don't know what is a yoke uh, unless ni wewe umelelewa huko mashambani a yoke ni ile unaona zile ngombe zinalima kwa mashamba si mwanasi msiona zile mabulls eh? na ile nini hiyo kinawekwa hapa dio ifurute dio ilime na huko chini sasa biblia inasema in the old testament the yoke was the big oxen given the big uh, what is that caravan cart what hiyo ya kubeba so the small one inapewa kale kadogo alafu it is yoked to the big one umepata so that hata kama zinalima pamoja lakini yule analima sio kale kadogo huyu <laughs> ndio beba hiyo ndio Yesu alikuwa anasema wewe ukue kale kadogo umpatie msiko yako akubebe mwende pamoja akikulimia wewe ni kwenda kuchukua mshahara come without money kwa sababu you are yoked with the one who carries the pass are you getting it when the yoke is broken everything now is taken care of yule mtu alikuwa amekuwekea hiyo yoke ni shetani yesu akishaitoa hmm? the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me to do what to set the captives free how does he set the captives free he is yoked with them 
so that wherever they are yeye ndiye anafanya kazi wao ni ni ni, ni, ni testimony tu wanatoa kule vile amekuwa si ndio hiyo wale wanafanya wanafanya miujiza sio wao wanafanya miujiza ni, ni Yesu anafanya muujiza alafu wewe unasema nilifanya muujiza hapana <laughs> it is yoked to the one who is able glory to god somebody's yoke is getting broken right now somebody's yoke is getting broken right now it is understanding it is applying it is receiving si unaona by the way to call the level ya receive hata nikikuambia hii ishara vile zinaonekana si ati ni sitaonekana kwa wengine ni wewe ndio ninakwambia upokee na na uanze sasa hivi kudhihirisha iko kila mtu akikuona naona ulikuwa kanisa haleluya lakini sasa ukiwa umegadamizwa na mayoka ambaye Yesu anakuambia lete na unakuja kanisani anakuambia lete alafu unamletea alafu ukisha, ukitoka nje unakumbuka ah nilikuja na kamuzigo yangu nimeenda aje na ibena. unakuja unaichukua tena narudi naye nyumbani hapana anointing will not allow that right so why because the anointing shall be no the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing and i'm saying this knowing very clearly that many of us have many yokes invisible yokes big yokes right painful yokes of all sizes of all nature and that's why god is giving us this message for that yoke to be broken she, she got it the young one <laughs> that yoke is they are forbidden you see he says we we started by looking at you remember psalms 1 105 verse 14 he did not suffer he did not permit them to do what to do them wrong yea who has anointed not to touch his anointed god want his anointed preserved to do them no harm everything that the devil tries to do he always come to do you harm you remember that John 10:10 10, 10. The thief comes to do what? To steal, to destroy and to kill. But Jesus says, I came so that you may do what? You may have life and have it more abundantly mean stress free life. Receive it because that is your portion. When the anointing comes that is stress free life. It's only anointing that can help you to live. I used to wonder how can you live at heaven on earth lifestyle anointing? It's anointing that changes everything around you that you enjoy what Jesus is enjoying in heaven now. He came down here to demonstrate vile nina enjoy kule tukiwa na na muitanga nani baba is the same level hata wewe unaweza you did you see Jesus struggling would you walk with Jesus and it is lunch time and you're wondering utakula nini can is it possible ati unashidwa una na tutakula nini hapa if thousand people 5000 people come around him they don't even care wanakaa tu hapo wao wa wanangojea chakula hawajui itatoka wapi or you, you want to tell me they didn't know kuta lunch itakuja because god had prepared them that within you there is somebody who is anointed hallelujah and hata kama huna chapa usijali kwa sababu utakula glory to god that is the life we are supposed to live in a way that even when you don't have you know you can eat and you can drink even without money there is no such a freedom that you can ever have in life you know there is a god in heaven and because there is a god in heaven who has invited me at nikikunywa from this fountain i don't have to pay you have confidence and you are aware that because of that anointing something is in you are you ready to know what is that 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 is something that's very clear that when you have anointing you attract god favor Amen. glory to god can you just just come alive and just give god a some oh you're writing <laughs> after you write that i know i know you don't want to miss that one but that is one of the most 
precious thing anointing brings your life. Look at anybody who was ever anointed. They were just, they had God's favor. Hallelujah. So Saul came as son of Kish. He went back as the king of Israel. He was just an ordinary man. The only thing that was tall than the others. Hakuna kitu ingina likuwa nae. He was taller than the others, but he was just an ordinary man. But when he got the anointing, he went home a king. How now? That's the issue now because if you look at that scripture in uh, Samuel, we were looking Samuel chapter uh, verse four. He says, "And they will salute you, and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive of their hands." You think it could have happened when he was looking for the donkeys? <laughs> no. Now he has changed. Therefore, other people around him, they know, ah, anaka kama king. So you find attract, you attract favor. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 3. And this is beautiful again. It says there in Proverbs 3, 4, 4, 4, 4 and 5, it says, put love around your neck like a necklace and faith around your neck, right? And when you have that love of God and faith operating in you, and then you trust God with all your heart and you not lean on your own understanding, then he says you will have a new name. Amen. Hallelujah. Just that, just putting love, God, God's love around your neck like a necklace. And then faith like a necklace. What does that mean? That you know you are loved. And because of faith, you can get anything from God. That gives you boldness, that gives you confidence that you're walking, such that you will have a new name from people because before you were miserable, but now you are the blessed one. Isn't it? Before you were the struggling one, but these days it's what? I am a fauru. Wana me monekania, sindiotuna semanga. Wambi watu ya tumunga mwenekuonekaniwa, wanaona umeonekaniwa. <laughs> Kwa sababu ulikuwa umekaa huja onekaniwa, sindio? That favor follows anointing. Anyone who ever carried anointing, they were highly favored. And they are highly favored like who? Like you and me. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians 1.6. We are highly favored. Is that what the Bible says? We were chosen before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. Why? Because he has lavished his grace upon us, meaning we are highly favored. So can you believe it? You are highly favored. Why? You already carry the anointing in you. Isn't it? He says there in that proverb, it says, you, you, will, you find favor from God and from men. So, kama when you una unashida uki complain, vila watu wana ku reject, ita kitu ina kosa ni nini? Ni anointing. Hakuna mutu wana kuchukia. Ala. Kwani mkuna watu wana kuchukia, wanasema maneno yenu baya. Ukiona hivo, una attract kitu ingine. But when you have the anointing, una attract watu wana ku admire. What when I say, I would like to be like you. Ulifanya nini diyo ufanya hivi, sindio? That is attraction that God put on you because the anointing in a, see, see, see that will be so, that they, can, they will become what? Trees of righteousness, correct? Trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord and God will be glorified through them. So wherever you go, you shine for him. You are glorifying God. So you are attracting people because they don't see problem. Yes. <laughs> when they see you, they see, ha, ha, kuna hope, ha, ha. isn't it? There are people when you are hungry, you would, you would want to be close to them. Sini kweri? Unapitia tu hapo kwa sababu we ukona ja, na unamugonga hivi. Ukipita. Why, 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 why are you attracted to that person? What makes the difference? It's the countenance abaye inadhihirisha ni anointia inagani unabeba. That's it. 
So when you have that anointing, many things around you changes. Not because you have done anything, but it's because the environment is bound to change when you appear. Hallelujah. So this is a sign you are anointed. And when you know that, then you become God's, the carrier of God's. And people who are, who are favor with God, Joseph, did he have the anointing? Yes. Was the favor of God following him? Yes. Was the enemy against him? Yes. He tried to destroy him. The more he tried to destroy him, the more favor, the more favor came upon him. Hallelujah. You put him in the pit, the favor comes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you'll have everything okay, doing well when you have the anointing. No. When you have the anointing, there will come a time they can throw you in the pit. Did you hear what I said? So, ukiwe kwa uko kwa pit, usijali, kwa sababu unabeba kitu wabai itaku lift up from the feet. What is that? Anointing. How, how, how do you explain ambaye wali, wali mweka hiyo kwa hiyo pit, alafu Egyptians about the strangers wanapita tu hapo. Is that coincidence? No. It is the favor that brought the Egyptian to carry him where, where his destiny was. I command those Egyptians to come your way today. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? They are attracted by the favor you are carrying. And you're not only carrying now, you know you have the favor. Hallelujah. Na hiyo ni mzuri kwa sababu hiyo tumepewa freedom kusambasa. Mesikia vile nimesema, favor peana, peana kwa wingi kwa sababu atu wengi hawana. I'm telling you the truth. Watu wengi hawatembei na grace. It is it is uh, 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 lacking in many people's life. So when you have that grace, share it with them. Can somebody say amen? amen? So when we have the anointing, the favor of God come upon us. Wow. This one, last one, and then we move on. It's the, in, in, in Samuel, uh, do you feel 10? And that's what I was saying. The anointing has a, make you a sign. Anointing make you like noticeable, right? Those signs, all of them, they are in you, embodiment. You in the hapo, and let it be when these, when these signs, Samuel was talking about, when these signs, verse seven, when these signs are come unto you, that you do as occasion serve you. For God is with you. So when you see this favor, when you see people just loving you and giving you a goat and bread, just do as occasion for you. What is that? It is sharing that favor with them. It is being a blessing to them. It is just being able to express, ah, na siku wangi hivi, si kawaida. Hmm? Kuna kitu imetendeka ime kwa maisha yangu. Sindio? So that is where you become a witness, glorifying God because of the grace that you carry. Many of us are missing the grace because when you are given, una misuse. Can somebody say, I'm not misusing my grace any longer? Hallelujah. It is given so that you attract people to what you carry. And when they come and they are wondering, because he says, we shall be for signs and for wonders. So wonders, siyo kuonyesha vile tuko na nguvu. Apana, siyo kuonyesha tituko, tu, we are, we are the, the champion or the, the, the superman. No. The, the signs you are supposed to be is people will look at you and you wonder, how did you become like this? How did you become the tree, a plant, the tree uh, of righteousness? You didn't make yourself, isn't it? So when you're trying to tell them how you became a tree of righteousness, you are expressing the source of your anointing. Amen. That is why sharing your testimony is what increases anointing. You got it, you got it. So when you're sharing the good news, you are increasing your anointing because you are given that anointing to receive a for purpose. Sinkweli. Lakini wengi wetu tukipewa hiyo anointing, tunafikiria ni yetu tu. Kama mambo yangu inaenda swali, hakuna shida. So you don't even want anybody to know you are saved. Sinona hiyo sasa. And remember, why did it come? So that you may be witnesses. Jerusalem, Jerusalem ni kule unakaa. Diyo naitua Jerusalem. 
Samaria na Judea ni wao neighbors. Right? Then Samaria neighbor were, were left. So everywhere you go you are supposed to tell people how God has been good to you. Amen. Glory to God. May God give you a testimony this week. Amen. Hallelujah. Because when that anointing is flowing in your life, people will see and they are admiring I. Ilifanyikaje? Hmm? Hiyo ni opportunity ya ushuhuda. And as you're giving your testimony, hey, do you know Jesus? He can do it for you. Nothing makes Jesus feel good than that. That this happened because of him. I am the way I am because of what he did. I have this because he paid for it. I am not hungry, I am not poor, I am not miserable, I am not sickly, I am not oppressed. The yoke was broken, was destroyed because he did it for me. That makes him feel he is the king of kings. This other one tunaimbia tunamwimbia hapa sa ingine sia sia ukweli. He is the king of kings. Are you sure you are? Apana hiyo ni ni ni, ni sawa ni sawa kumwambia hivyo lakini ile inampendeza zaidi ni kuambia mtu ambaye hamjui he is the king of king do you know the king of king that one you convince him lakini hii hata kama hupendi si unaona watu wale wengine wanaiba unaiba tu wewe so ushuhuda ni yule una wewe mwenyewe unashuhudia baye mtu ambaye si kwa sababu uko kanisa si ndio nisema si kwa sababu uko kanisa by the way nani ni akina nani wangapi watu wanaimbanga hiyo wimbo nyumbani ukiwa peke yako he is the king of king he is the... when you, not when you are just full <laughs> wakati umekula chakula mzuri hapana even when you are frustrated if you really want the anointing to flow i told you not to complain kwa sababu uki complain unaongezea yoke mwambie ah hiyo si kweli that is the truth complaining ni kuambia shetani and ongeza yoko kwa sababu unamwambia niko pande yako but when you are happy joyful thankful praiseful then you are telling god break the kayok isn't it that i mean sometimes you don't even need to speak many things breaking the yoke and destroying the yoke no the yoke will be destroyed when anointing alive now and i'm sure we're going to that next now it is how to increase your anointing that changes everything to make sure your anointing doesn't run dry hallelujah can i give you one or two before we go you have the anointing now you can see what it can do for you when you don't have favor you know si kwa sababu watu wanakuchukia Melewa si watu wa kuchukia hapana ni wewe 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 tu ndio una present hiyo misery <laughs> miserable being so wanakuhepa tu but when you begin to manifest the joy you see, that you see you're full of joy peter says even when you're going through trials look at even when you're going through trials you still manifest what joy unspeakable and full of glory hata hakuna mtu anaweza jua ati uko ulikuwa frustrated na mtu hapale lakini most of us why why wait until something happen they are looking for somebody and no and anybody just to tell them how miserable you are uh-uh, that one does not increase anointing in a reduce have you ever been angry Najua ile energy una release when you are angry. Utakuwa na nguvu kweli. If all the time it is out anger out of burst. Hiyo kitu ina inamaliza ina anointing kabisa. Hmm? So it is oil of gladness instead of kuhusunika tu. Wengi wetu tunasikia anga la hatu tukihusunika. Na you make sure somebody sees that tunahusunika. Imagine I, I don't understand. Kwa sababu kama unahusunika ujifiche tu. Lakini watu wengi wanataka ujue amehusunika. Na nakuja karibu usikie hiyo uhisi vizuri. Shida ni nini? Lack of anointing. Say my anointing is increasing. 
Hallelujah. So when, when God anoints you, he anoints you for a purpose. And it, it just work good for you. He, he says in, in, in Psalm 89 verse 20, he says, I have found David my servant with my holy oil. Here, with my holy oil. Eh? Have I anointed him? Hmm? with whom my hand shall be established. See what happened when you're anointed. God's hand is established as you delight in his anointing. He says, my arm, God's hand, also shall strengthen him. Glory to God. That's why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. As long as they know, work on anointing. Why? Because it shall be your strength. And he says, the enemy, hear this, the enemy shall not exact upon him, hmm? nor the son of wickedness afflict him. They are not permitted. He suffered them not to do them harm. Who? The anointed one. Where? From America? From Israel? Or from Egypt? No, from CCR Infinity. Hallelujah. You have been anointed. God says, I have anointed my servant David. Let God say that about you this afternoon. I have anointed my servant. You So you anointing kama imetumwa kwapo. Inapita tu. By the way, do you know there are some there are some graces that operate sometimes in a different environment. I don't preach like this. I am aware of where I'm coming from. Because I am under instruction as I speak, it shall be happening. Amen. So if you haven't, I, I began by saying, tap into the move. This, I, I don't speak like that, do I? It is an unction. It's an anointing. An anointing by itself to deliver everything that I'm speaking because they are not coming from me, honestly. You know that. So when you connect with them, somehow you just find those things happening. But kama umenizoea, ni sawa tu. Lakini nikuonya kitama nikuambia, today is a special day. Why? I am sent to tell you what you are lacking. And when you get to know, you are good to go. Sinikweli. He says there, did, did we finish that one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I will, yeah, I will beat, is it? I will beat down his enemies before his face. That is what happens to your enemies when you are anointed. God will beat them like this for you. That's why when you are anointing, when you are anointed, you, that's what Jesus said. Look at this. When you are anointed, Jesus said, the preference ni blessed are those who are meek. Blessed are those who don't defend themselves. They allow God to fight for them because if God fight for you, you can guess what is going to happen. When you're anointed, God says, ah, if it and yangu. Unaelewa vile mambo yote mungu na kufanya na anointing. Na wewe diyo unahaso tu kujaribu kupigana na ati to fight for your right. Ah, Apana, that would, I have anointed my servant with oil, and whoever tried to touch him, the Bible says in Zechariah, he is touching the apple of my eye. That's why I normally tell people, dare touch me. Like now I am anointed, dare touch me. I know I'm a very alive to it, that if you do that, you're trying to touch the apples, God's apple. Utafika apple, na umerushwa juna, na kainjo, unampele kwa mari, ata ujudi toka wapi. That's what happened. You see, when a president is walking, you might think he is alone. See, you are my bodyguard. You are my bodyguard. You are my bodyguard. You are my bodyguard. Bodyguard is going to be around him. Very sana. Sasa akitembea tu town na fikiria tena era upeke yake. Ukijaribu kumuguza hivi, hujui umerushwa juna nani. That is what anointing does for you. Eh? What does the Bible say? He make his he put he give charge to his angels to surround his anointed one. It's the anointing that attract angels. Hallelujah. 
So when you're walking in the street of Nairobi, don't worry, there are angels on guard. You can't see them, but they are on guard. Just like the president, they are there, waiting for somebody to dare. Hallelujah. Some of these things are real. Hmm? When you know that you have divine protection, you cease to worry. Isn't it? Because you know somebody is watching. And because it is God who is in charge in your life, that shall be your portion. Hallelujah. So we saw that in Psalms 105, that, that he, he, he makes sure the anointed is protected every 24-7. Now let me finish with this one. How do you get anointed? Who anoints you then? For this anointing to work. Kufanya hii maboyote, who anoints you? Hmm? I, I think I read that, I, I see that scripture in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Now it changes for God is with me. Hallelujah. So if God is with you, you go out doing that which is good. Where? In the marketplace. You go doing that which is good. Where? In the family circles. Isn't it? Why? Because God is with you. In what sense? I am a carrier of anointing. Hallelujah. Jesus now, he says, it is, uh, by, uh, I think I want to make that distinction. It is God who anoints you. But it is Jesus who baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. Is that correct? John said, we who is coming after me is greater than me. He shall baptize you with water and the Holy Spirit and fire. So it is Jesus, isn't it? But because you are anointed by God, the anointing that come, uh, that, that, that could be Matthew 3, 11. Indeed, I indeed baptize you with water and to repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I. Hallelujah. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, that is the initial con con contact with the, person, with the Holy Spirit. And it is Jesus who baptizes you. With the Holy Spirit, with the evi listen, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, sin query, and having the initial power. But now, when God anoints you, you have power to do good and to set free those who are oppressed by the enemy. Not when you have the baptism; those are two different things. The baptism of the Holy Spirit enables you to speak in tongues and to glorify God. Verbal, right? You shall receive power, but power manifesting in what? In tongues of fire. But he says, you remain in Jerusalem until you are endued with the power. Now, this power is already in you, but hijakua activated. Hijakua, what is that? It is charging, is it? The, to recharge, is it? Charge. What, 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 is, what, what is that? Come on, attack a power. Energy. The recharging, isn't it? So the, you have the power. When you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have the capacity, you have potential, you have power. Isn't it? Like in your power, you have charged. You have to do it. So when that power is charged, and that is the point I want us to come to, how do you charge that anointing now to begin to work for you? Because it's see automatic. He says, oh, and imesema, the favor, the protection, the recovery, they are there. They are, they are, they are, they are waiting for you to do something. Here on Inini, activating the, 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 the what? The generator, isn't it? What do you do to generate, to, to generate power? You are a technical man that you just started. It's our <laughs> so your generator is in you. Kama sasa tu kona generator hapa kwa kwa church. Lakini atu itu me, sindio. So he power ikipotea, we can still just activate the generator. Na inafanya kazi. So ukona unabebana na generator daniyako, but it requires to be generated. 
Now, hiyo generator kama haina mafuta, hata ukijaribu kujenerate kivipi, haifutafanya kazi. So it requires what? The fuel. Sindio? For it to work. And as it works, it generate more power. Now, guess what? The power that you received by the receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not good enough. Ni power tu ambaye ni ya kwanza. Right? So that if you are going to do heavy duty work, hata kama ni generator, if you want to do more with the generator, you put more fuel. Isn't it? If you want to do big project, you put more fuel. Hiyo generator yako, hiyo anointing kwa ndani yako inahitaji the same procedure. Kama unataka ifanye kazi kubwa, ni lazima ufeed. Sasa shida ya waumini wa wengi ni kwamba tuko na generator lakini generator iko na ukame wa mafuta. <laughs> Haina mafuta. Una, unajaribu kugurumisha lakini vr, vr, mm, inakwama. So ni lazima ujue means of regenerating hiyo power dio itoe kiasi ya ku push trailer eh? ama kubeba kamziko kadogo hiyo ndio tofauti ya sisi sote ni vile ume ni ile, gener, ile, ile power ume generate hii week nikiangalia <laughs> simwangalie sana nitajua kama ume generate kalitu power kwa sababu the law si 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 ni obvious nimesema evidence inaonekana kama hizo ishara hazipo inamaanisha kuna shida na shida sio anointing Anointing iko ni vile haikufanyishwa kazi. So you didn't generate by doing, showing people's favor, doing good things wherever you go, isn't it? So the power ididimia mpaka ukifika pale ni kama kalikuwa kamebaki katone ka fuera. <laughs> Thank God alinituma na mjube ya, ku, ya kuongezea kafuera. Ka Ndio unasikia ni umesasamu ume sisi muka si ndio why i am stirring up by the spirit of god that that oil must remain at a certain level isn't it gari na kuanga hivyo ndio umewekewa gauge pale ya kuonyesha mafuta imefika wapi juzi nilikuwa na edesha gari na tukaenda mahali kwingine na huko sitataja sijui ni kama ni hiyo mitalo ilikuwa huko gauge yangu ikakaa kama ina haionyeshi haionyeshi kuna na mafuta na nikashidwa ala na tuliko ni sande tukitoka hapa lakini nikiangalia gauge naona imeenda chini inaenda chini tu na vile inaenda chini nikumaanisha inaisha na ikiisha ikikaribia iki, mwisho inakupatia danger unaona ka tank kakifanya hivi ujue uta, utasimama any minute hata <laughs> kiroho ni hivyo <laughs> kuna generator ya watu wengine inafanya hivyo deja <laughs> kwa sababu hii wiki kuna kuwa na mashida si ndio unapitia milima na mabonde kwa hiyo milima na mabonde si mafuta ina, inatumika la, 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 alafu geji taonyesha ai hatari <laughs> so that is why knowing what you carry for, for like now like that one i was i was just i was observing Um, I, the people I was with, like my, my, my wife and like Israel, they didn't know, but I was, no, I was very concerned. And where we were, there were no petrotation. Lakini ngari imeanza kunionyesha, inatelemuka tu. Meaning, vile tunaingia dhani na huko tunaenda, inaweza simama any place. And hakuna jia unaweza ludi ya tukaweke mafuta. Siti kwambia, the five, the, the ten virgins, eh? wale wajinga walifikiria ah tu 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 tulia tu hakuna shida hata bride gumakuja ninajua kinananiwa kwa mafuta si ndio walikuwa nasema sana ah kinananiwa kwa mafuta itatoshoya itatosha wait until the bride groom arrives you must buy your own hakuna anointing in a bo- yeah that's a very good example now even nikiwa hapo na gari ingine ipite hapo na sina mafuta hakuna jia inaweza kusimama ati anichotee mafuta 
Haiwezekani. Haiwezekani hata kama uko na full tank. Si ndio? Ni lazima niende wapi? Kwa station. Hata <laughs> anointing is the same. Ni lazima uende kwa shell ama kwa rubies. Whatever your choice is. That is it. Now what I'm trying to help you now is there is a refueling for that anointing to do all those things we are talking about. Ukifanya some few the few unafanya ina endelea kuwa chini. So there has to be a way that you are not fully off and that uh, it you 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 are not you are not able to function. And that's why because you you must be careful what you're doing every day your activities so that you you are not caught and away let me cross uh, as because our time is up but that means anointing ina kufanyia hiyo mambo yote lakini it has a price nilisema hivyo jusande lakini haukufurahia there is a price to pay for the anointing to give you free wine and free bread Meona, there is a price, not money. There is a price you pay for the anointing to work for you. And that's what you need to find out. What is this price that you can pursue? And we said one of them is just to come. Come and drink because you are invited. Uh, and I want to mention two more and then we cross. That the price that you can pay. As we, 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 are talk, we are talking about receiving the anointing. And uh, the, the anointing come in your life, so it remove the labor of foolishness. Ku struggle, ku hustle, and nothing is coming by. Sinona, it is set you free from all those limitations. But there is a price tag. Now, if you have your price tag, then you are good to go. It says uh, in, in, in Proverbs 1.23, Turn you at my reproof. Turn at, at my correction. Hmm? It's, it's about repentance. And it says, Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my word to you. Now, this is what makes the anointing to work. As you walk by re- receiving correction, receiving reproof, conviction of sin in your life. What is that? The price that you and I need to pay is called consecration. It is purity of heart. Purity of heart is the best fuel for the anointing. Can I say that again? Purity of heart is the anointing that cannot drain in your vehicle easily. It is quality anointing that is generated by purity of heart and not religious activities. So if you want to pay a price, it is a price of holiness. It is a price of righteousness. Jesus said to John the Baptist, let us do this so that we can do what? Fulfill all righteousness. Why? I will be walking with a very unique, very special anointing. I can't afford to miss it here. Because I am the son of God, I don't want to be baptized. Sinona. Hiyo kiburi is the same thing. You remember like when Peter came to Jesus and Jesus said he is going to be crucified. And Peter think, thought he was a friend of Jesus and was telling him, Master, please, come, come, come. It cannot happen to you, Master. No, when I'm here, no, I'll cut somebody's ear. Now, Peter, was he, was, he, was he a bad guy? He loved Jesus, isn't it? He was just trying to tell him, I will make sure I protect you. Eh? He meant it. He meant it. But he was thinking, yes, what a fool I hear, son. Ah, Peter, hey, where are you, anybody? Hey. I, am, I am secure, I'm safe to be near you. It is interesting. He turned a kamambia, get behind me, Satan. Why? Let me tell you. It is the devil who comes to turn you away from your anointing. Whenever you're focusing on using your anointing to do certain things, anakunogonashe, anakwambia, ah, nilazima uombe hii, njabu. 
Enda, unaweza fanya tu. You need to speak to him and get behind me Satan. When you hear a voice telling you, ah, usie uziombe asubuhi ukiamka, utaoba jioni ukirudi kutoka kazini. Get behind me Satan. He is trying to do what? Could drain your anointing for that day. Refueling imefungwa. So you go out there and the day is miserable. Miserable kwa nini? Msaidizi hayuko karibu. Uliambiwa refuel before utoke nyumbani. Kasema ah normally that happens to many people sometimes. Unaweza unaweza kuwa gari haina mafuta lakini kuna kuna petrost fulani ambaye ni your favorite. So it's like your mindset is like nitafuel pale. So unaenda tu ukipita petrol station ambayo ziko hapo katikati ukifikiria utafika kule. <laughs> By the time unafika umepita ya mwisho ukipita katikati gari na inasimama. Hiyo inaitwa nini? Lack of consecration. Purifying your life daily. Reproof mean repentance. Powerful word. Not just crying crocodile tears. No. Repentance means when you see something is wrong, unaambia Mungu nisamehe. Nisaidie. Nimekukosea hapa na sitaki kuruz anointing. Ukia uki wengi wetu tuna tunafikiria kimawazo ya kwamba hakuna mtu aliniona. Hmm? Ah hata pasi hajui nilifanya hivyo. So haina hai, hakuna shida. Lakini tiari umekat ume, umejikata miguu kwa sababu ni anointing yako ume, ume, ina, ume una, unafungulia pipe ianze ku leak. Mlikuwa mna mnashangilia tukiongea mambo ya favor. <laughs> Imekuwaje tena? Eh? Let me tell you hakuna favor. Le, okay. Anointing attract favor, right? It is repentance that attract the anointing that attract the favor. Umepata sasa? Without anointing, without repentance hakuna anointing. The more unaendelea kujichanganya, the more unayakuwa far from refueling of anointing. So that's why you should be very very careful. Jabu kidogo tu sana ikifanyika na ni makosa. Kiri ni makosa naambia Mungu nisamehe. Usiko usikoje mpaka Jumapili ati ndio utakuja kupoa kwa roho yako kwa Bwana. Hapana. Sasa utagojea mpaka Jumapili lakini the whole week utakuwa drained kwa sababu kila kidogo ume una, ina, ina pile up inaendelea kunyonya mafuta ya ambaye ya kukupatia nguvu na ushindi na mamlaka. So that is the most important thing. And I, I, I wanted to remind us so that we don't lose that because Jesus said suffer not we cannot avoid to walk in righteousness holiness without which no man can see God amen so make sure you take care of that and when you have now that anointing in you the bible says in Luke chapter 5 but new wine must be put into new bottles hallelujah new wine skin so when you have the anointing you must make sure that anointing is not in the old wine skin hallelujah old wine skin ni ile tabia ya ya kawaida tu just kuishi kiholela holela hivi if you would really want to carry the anointing there is a standard there is a character that is expected of you and that is what i'm saying paying the price of holiness paying the price of consecration consecration mean you kujitolea kwa bwana kuwa na utaratibu kuwa careful what you do what you say where you go the people who interact now how are they and how are they affecting your life so that is one thing that you should allow you should not allow the enemy to take away from you because god want to see that purity of heart and be able to help you to work it out for you so that all those things can manifest in your life so how does repentance come and i cross with that one real true repentance begin with heavy true conviction conviction 
Why? The Holy Spirit is the one who convicts us. Na kwa sababu dia na supply that power, that anointing. Aki aki detect kuna shida, kuna makosa, kuna dhambi. Wewe kwa sababu sio mwenye dhambi hakuku sio kuhukumu. It is convicting you. Dio ubadilishe ama ufanye nini utubu dio usipoteze msaada wako ambaye ni karibu sana. Right? So when you are convicted don't get angry rejoice that's why if you do not get if you're not affected by my reproof in a negative way god says i will put my 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 spirit it's like see 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 what a, like like putting a, his spirit upon you ni kama atakuwekea ndani that anointing in a way kwa kama ni kama you're drinking it you see the holy spirit anawe kwa ndani yako sio afanye so that now the seven dimension now sinafanya kazi in full measure hakupimi it is the full measure kwa nini you have purified yourself you are living light you are walking carefully and as you do that you are inviting more anointing As you pray you consecrate yourself as you serve you consecrate yourself as you interact with the people make sure you are very conscious that there is a person in you who is holy right Paul says how can i i cannot do i cannot defile the temple of the holy spirit this body is a temple of the holy spirit so don't watch dirty movies did you hear what i just said don't allow to be corrupted by development ya kila aina and it is everywhere now some sometimes it is very interesting unaweza fikiria those those evil things are in the in the matatu now they have even gone ahead they are putting them outside wewe huko kwa hiyo matatu lakini unaona tu unaona screen nje umesiona hizo matatu what are they doing this the devil knowing this the way to reduce anointing Let me tell you especially you young people mna penanga ile gari ni iko iko na na hiyo ma 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 music hiyo yote hiyo music hiyo hiyo loud sound na sikia hivyo it is calculated to reduce the anointing in your life that's why ukiingia hapo unasikia kama you are in hell if you are sensitive in your spirit you feel ah, where am i here ukitoka hapo just try to pray when you are in that environment you can't even pray unakuta uko dry kabisa so the more una expose yourself to those things dio sinakuharibia anointing yako inaendelea ikiliki na inaliki so guard your anointing how do you guard living right holy and to the lord now i i, I wanted to To, to mention the next one but because of time i will not be able to mention but I just allow me to read that scripture so that we 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 conclude there isaiah isaiah 58 verse 6 isaiah 6 isaiah 58 verse 6 uh, because that's another another thing that is going to help us to preserve our anointing we said last time by the way Did you fast this week? Meskia to to yes to menda chini hapo. Okay, let me let me show you why why many things you are not working within the week because fasting is one of the major weapon if you really want to sustain your anointing to increase your anointing. It is purely made for that right so if you get it hear what it says is this not the fast that i have chosen to do what to loose the bonds of wickedness now if you fast and you loose the yoke the bondage of wickedness for others how about yourself so you're the first beneficiary when you fast you don't it's not a hunger strike When you fast you are breaking what 
the bond of wickedness, the heavy burdens we are talking about. The yoke must be destroyed by the anointing. What is the means of getting anointing? Fasting. Now, we mentioned fasting, but when I want a jar, fasting is refueling and the best refueling. Hallelujah. What is it? What is the purpose of anointing of fasting? To undo what? Heavy burdens. What undo heavy burdens this week? Fasting to Kidogo. Fasting is magic, if I may call it that way. But used correctly. For example, I said to you on Sunday, you don't fast for God to answer your prayers. Many people say they are fasting for God to answer their prayer. No, it's, fasting does not make God to answer your prayer. And you know you are faster than Haku answer. Sindio. <laughs> You fasted maybe 21 or 40 days and nothing happened. That is not what to move God. No, it is breaking the yoke over your life by your fasting that makes answers to come faster. It's not God delaying your prayers. It is the power of the enemy delaying your prayer. Destroy the yoke and the answer come. Do you remember that? Do you remember Daniel when he was fasting 21 days? Where was his answer? The, the angel told him, the day you prayed, Daniel, your answer was given. But when I was coming, the one who gives yoke pre- prevented me from bringing your answer. Was it from God? No, it's from the enemy. So your answer has already been given. It is on the way and somebody is holding it back. That is why he is putting a burden on you and a yoke on you so that you'll be start blaming God. God did not answer my prayer. No, he answered long time. It is the devil who is holding your prayer and your responsibility is to have enough anointing to break the yoke. Did you get it? That's it. So that is why we must do everything possible that our yoke must be broken. And as we agree with God and he's working in our lives for this, that bondage, that burden, that yoke must be destroyed so that we begin to see the favor of God, recovery. We see the peace of God. We see people just giving us, being generous to us. So when you do that, you are fasting to break yoke over your life and you're also fasting to break other people's yoke so that they also have they, they, they are attracted to you also because ukifuja hiyo hiyo bondage yao wao pia wanafurahi wanachangamuka wakikuona you benefit also see ndio lakini kama sisi zote we are mourning and we are under oppression hmm? to undo heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free that one is very important now not you to get others oppressed to be free the day you fast not for you, you fast for somebody else, you will see what happens. That's the best fasting. Not about your bondage. It's good to fast for your bondage to break. But if you fast for somebody else's bondage, ah, it says like God becomes your lear guard. You, 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 you attract attention from God and he comes very fast. That's what it says there. We are still there in verse 7. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? That's another way of, when you fast, when you fast is not to save. When you fast is, you share your bread with the hungry. You fast, you don't eat the bread, but you don't keep it for tomorrow. <laughs> share with the one who doesn't have, isn't it? Ata kama utaiweka for tomorrow, at least make sure mtu mingina napata mkate. Kwa hiyo nafasi mungu wakame kupatia kutokula hiyo, mpati, mpati, <laughs> tafuta mtu wakona jawa, umpe mkate, sindio? So you, you'll be blessed, he says, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover them and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Usitoroke watu wanyu wa 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 familia. 
Sindio. That's what they're saying. Take care of them. Atawale wako, very lazy and careless. Just love them. And when you're doing that, you are earning more anointing. These are the things you don't do for anointing, isn't it? No wonder our anointing naendelea ikifivia tu. But when you are conscious as I fast, it's not hunger strike. This is more anointing. What do I get from anointing? Favor. What do I get from anointing? Protection. What do I get from anointing? Recovery. What do I get from anointing? Progress. Will you fast? For sure. But for us, we don't fast because Ababu will not understand. I. Hakuna musosi leo, apana. These are the benefits of fasting. Then, that's what I was saying in verse 8, and I close. Then your light shall break forth like the morning, and your healing shall spring forth speedily. Glory to God. And your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your lear God. Hallelujah. That when you are walking, the glory of God is your protection behind you don't, know, you, don't, you don't worry about what is happening behind you because the glory of God is your God behind you. Hallelujah. So, I am saying this because we are dealing with real yokes of life. All of us. There is a yoke in your life that is minim, minimizing your anointing. Affecting the impact of your anointing. Yako. So you must deal with that yoke. And some of the yokes are heavy. So now you say heavy burdens, heavy yokes. Shetani amekuwekelea ambaye ni ya kukuvinyilia, kukumaliza. So it requires very aggressive reaction. And that's why fasting also is one of them. So as you fast for those yokes to be broken, you will be doing two things. You will be forbidding and binding the enemy from oppressing you. Did you get it? Fasting does binding, forbidding the enemy to do what he's doing. Kukuongezea mzigo. Right? Then, number two, you're fasting in a nini? Loosing, setting free. It loses you from the bondage. It loses you from the impact of what you're going through. And begin to allow the anointing to flow, to do work for you. Now, having said that, this week we fasted. We said you can fast about three weeks or something, uh, three days, one day or something. But today I want us to go to the notch higher. When you hear these things, you don't relax. Uh-uh. It is intensifying your knowledge, applying it to work for you. So we're going to take it to the next level. And we're going to do 21 days first from today. <laughs> I got only one, amen. I receive it. If you want the anointing, I say it, kuna price tag. Hmm? If, it, if you want the anointing to do those things we are talking about, there is also sio pesa, ne, something that you do. My God, you, you remember that man, old young man who came to Jesus and asked him, what can I do to get into the kingdom of heaven? Go and sell everything and give your money to the poor. How did that man react? I saw some people reacting like that. Ah. How? <laughs> It is just a small price to pay. And it's not too big. Now, the good thing is out of Kufa. Lakini hii yoku ikiongezeka inaweza kukumaliza, by the way. Did you know that? The yoke of the enemy inaweza kukumaliza any time. So it is better fasting that you are assured if you do it correctly, it's vile bibiria imesema, haiwezi kukumaliza. Sindio? So, put on your smile and say, ah, glory to God, an opportunity to fast this season. Hallelujah. That one alone increases your anointing by saying that alone. You say, God, I was waiting for this moment, Lord. Hallelujah. It has come. Glory to God. I can see somebody saying, are you sure? <laughs> 
But then anyway, I want us to make it very light for us. It's not 21 days with a fast. So I want us to do 21 days, all of us together. So you, know, you know how that is done. Hmm? So what you need to do is at least every, you take a day that you will fast every week. So that we know as a church there is somebody fasting that day. So we are fasting 21 days. So that the other one fasting the other day covers you if you're not fasting that day. So you know, like it can work. So if you fast, those who would fast on Monday, then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every day, kuna mutu fast from here. Isn't it? So that if you're not strong enough to go Friday and Saturday, if you do Friday, Saturday, somebody will cover you.